Hopefully I can get it. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here, guys. Uh, I am really excited about talking what, um, with some artists at, at the Equinox show. I think it's uh, a really, um, not because I curated it, I think it's a really um, beautiful show in a way that we are opening a window of communicating with, um, with Latin American artists, uh, female um, artists from Guatemala and LA and Ventura County. So I think for me as a, a foreign artist that I've been here in, and I'm a Latinx artist. Um, it was really interesting to me to see the work that has been produced in those times. And also um, had my intention was to really have a really broad um, type of works like video, animation, uh, weaving, and all what we, um, the women's art do that is so um, a multi-facetic, I will say, because there's different right practices involved in this show. But at the same time, I think it has this unity of um, rebirth. Uh, for me, uh, first I wanna thank Paul Linhart because he actually um, invited me to do this curation. And I was really, really thrilled that he picked a, a Latina <laughs> to do this. And um, also that I think was that's part of my, my intention that I could bring to the table uh, a more broad conversation with other artists and other women. Um, like we all know, Equinox is a, is a really important, for me, it's a really meaningful time in, in the year where, um, you know, it's the beginning of spring, but also uh, for me was the, uh, trying to get a, a conversation of what is to talk, I mean, to talk about rebirth, right? Rebirth, uh, what rebirth means and how we are been in lockdown for for a long time, a year or so, and I was interested of what the artists were doing in in this in this time, right? So, um, for me, like like I said, I was trying to open this conversation with people, and I invited some artists from Guatemala, which I actually had the opportunity to to go to their studios and meet them, and um, Oh, just want to ask if you can probably just mute, mute your microphone so if you can have that sound in the background, that'd be great. <laughs> um, invited artists from Guatemala and from LA and also a response, it was a response of an open call, right? So, uh, and one example is Randy that I want to just mention really quick that I, she was one of the artists that I invited uh, and because the work that she's doing now, and I believe that um, Randy, you were working on this pieces last year, right? Yeah. And yes. it, it was really interesting for me to see that you are exploring silence in a way and how, you know, how can, and it would just, it kind of tricked me because I'm like, oh, a wall is talking to me now, <laughs> you know? So I think as you explore the other too, the other person who is, you know, in contact with that um, image of, you know, even without sound for me was really important too, because in this times of like, okay, we're talking about a wall, <laughs> you know, and a wall is kind of like doing all these expressions, but you talk about it um, of your work more in, in depth and in, in a little bit. Okay. So first, uh, I just kind of wanted to, um, like I said, say thank you to all the artists too that trusted me because um, nobody really knows me, I think, in this area. And the artists that I know in Guatemala were like super happy to give, they, they trusted me, they gave me the work and I brought it in. Uh, so it is um, an honor for me to have some uh, artists from there as well. Um, so we're gonna start um, talking, talking about your practices. And I think um, I welcome um, Audra Lucas to talk uh, about her work. Also, uh, Cheyenne Happens um, from Ventura, that um, she will be talking about hers, and Randy um, from Los Angeles. Sorry, I don't know how to say you, your last name. It's Matushevitz. Matushevitz, okay. <laughs> and so, welcome, and let's get started.
You want to share your screen? Who, who do you want to go first? Uh, uh, Audra, Lucas. OK, um, am I unmuted? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So I thought I would show some of the pieces that are um, the complementary, the remaining pieces from the show, from the one that um, is titled Blood Clot Ink Blot. So these are hard to take a photo of and get a good image because of the obvious, the texture. So this is one, and you're probably familiar with the Rorschach test, the Rorschach um, ink blot test. And that is what um, inspired me to do these pieces. Um, there's a total of eight and the piece, the three that are in the show um, come with with this one, I did it originally in a performance piece where I was professor contortionist and I would go and I would take people's psychological evaluation um, because it was a psychological test. And um, do you want me to just talk about that piece, the, like that collection of pieces? Yeah, you can start with, with that and then you, you can go in depth about other works that you do. Cause yeah, like I said, you know, I, I, I will, we all would like to know more about what the other things that you do. Well, I will tell people all day long about how <laughs> fucked up society is and how I think that we need to fix it. And um, that's pretty much what my art is, is really about. Being a part of the show was really an honor because you could see that in the representation from the art and from the different women from around the world. So um, it was just amazing to get to be a part of that. Um, so you can cut me off or tell me to, to rein it in at any time. Um, so like I said, these pieces were, for, were from a performance art piece and why I thought that it was a good, why I submitted it for the rebirth part of this particular show is because the, there's been this rupture in self-silencing of the, the psychology of women, right? So women in, in the United States in particular, the psychology has always been about punishing women or punishing gender that doesn't fit within this stereotypical box, which is extremely violent. Um, but the pathologizing of women in our culture has gone from bodies, from ownership of, of actual women bodies to, um, you know, pathologizing the bodies and then the minds. And, and that's why I chose the ink blot test and the blood is to represent the menstrual cycle like a lot of my other work is. And um, I like it and I chose it because it's really this like shock, like, oh, that's disgusting. And I'm thinking, well, good fucking good because it is disgusting that women's bodies are pathologized in this way and punished if we don't do what you know this patriarchal view of us should be should be doing um so women have been called crazy for abnormal behavior since we identified what we thought was psychology and that's been as far as um you know a woman being hysterical like um I wrote it down, okay, so like, if you, you were considered crazy as a woman if you wanted kids, if you didn't want kids, if you didn't accept being, um, having incest perpetrated upon you or rape or wearing pants instead of dresses, not identifying into the sex that you're born into, not wanting to be, be men's property, masturbating, homosexuality. Um, they literally went to mental institutions and this is from the 20th century, so like the, the idea of the ink blot test is kind of um, like, okay, so the 20th century, like now women, women are considered human, right? But are, are women really considered human if they're still being sent to, sent away for not fitting within this um, structure of what women is supposed to be? And so that abnormal behavior is really just women being actual human beings <laughs> with thoughts and beliefs and and you know um, ideas on their own, and um, I guess that is really um, kind of where that started. And then the more research that I did into the performance piece, the more I realized that this is still going on. Like this is not, this is not like oh we're we're new here. Like we have all this education and we have all this psychological development and all of this new um, education to, to teach us how to think and to perceive things, but how much has it really changed, right? Women are still getting in trouble for um, defending themselves to rapists. Like there was a, just a 17 year old woman that went to prison for killing the man that was um, forcing her into prostitution and assaulting her. So 
this is not changing. And so when I did this art and this performance piece, I was like, okay, so it's non-compliant women, which I would say that most of the, the women here would identify as being non-compliant. And then um, the new revolution, right? Um, of that psychological perspective that I was just mentioning um, is actually in the DSM. If anybody knows what the DSM is, that's how psychologists identify different dis, um, um, I, I hate to say mental illness, but mental yeah. illnesses. Di diagnoses. Yeah, diagnoses. Yeah, Cheyenne would know. <laughs> um, and there's there's plenty of still, um, some diagnoses still being used to identify non-compliant women and punishing them for not fitting in that box. So even though we've, we've really come a long way, um, I've, I kind of, that resonated with me and that's why that anger came out of me in the blood clot ink blot. Cause it's like, now who's the crazy one? Can you see it? Are you crazy? What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Cause that's what's constantly being asked. So yeah, I won't even get into the borderline personality disorder or the PMDD, but basically it's about this whole history of pathologizing women's bodies and minds and um, me as an individual and as an artist saying, yeah, fuck you, no. Yeah, so. and that, I, I mean, that's a great uh, point because I also think, think that women, we are exoticized, I mean, by our bodies, you know, our body is something that every, like every man talks about, like we, that's all we are, right? And I feel like, mm -hmm getting this word out is also important as a performance. I don't, I, maybe you can explain a little bit what the performance exactly was, but I feel like it's sort of for women when they do performance art, it's also healing that trauma that society is, you know, uh, put yeah. you through, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so what's the performance itself? Uh, can you explain just a little? <laughs> so the piece is I um, just kind of dress up like I think a professor would dress and then I go around with my with, with my notebook and I take these out and then I'll set a subject in front of me and I'll um, read them what the psychological test is and there's like basically it's the same verbiage that you see in the Rorschach test and then I categorize their responses in the same way based on on the um, the images and then I kind of mess with people and I'm like, oh, this is your, you know, toxic masculinity speaking, or this is yada, 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 to try and get people to think differently about that perspective that they have. And then I, I write it all down and keep it in a notebook and I'll do something with it someday. Awesome. That's great. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think that's kind of like part of the performance too, is that question, you know, just question. I mean, and also kind of like, okay, well, kind of like that debate of like what you think and what I think is not, you know, in that box. But it's the same, it's not the same. So. Well, it's kind of also what you had just said about like being able to be someone or do something that you couldn't normally do for that healing process. Cause it's like, not often can you call somebody on, on the, you know, the patriarchy or whatever that may be. Um, because that's, that could put you in a dangerous position. But when you're doing a performance piece, you can really, I feel like you can really get away with more and it's less attached to who you are. So it's a little bit more freeing. And I liked that, I, that you mentioned that it's healing because it is. Yeah, absolutely. Do you wanna share um, some other of your work? Um, some other pieces or how, how, you know, maybe the process of how you started it with this. Um, so let's share this one. This was one of the first pieces that I started in the blood series. Um, and this is um, pages from the Christian Bible. And the pieces that, uh, the pages that are chosen have some like highlighted areas of, of blood that you can tell. And they're like, you know, you can keep your woman silenced in church. She's not allowed to speak or, and you know, your woman's not clean if she has a female child for so many days. So it's like the pieces in the book that are extremely misogynist. Um, and I couldn't do all of them because clearly that would take up forever. Um, so I chose these ones 
And then this, this is a collection of blood from friends um, and it's menstrual blood mixed with some epoxy and it's to show um, the vaginal canal and um, to kind of mimic um, a woman and, and the ability to um, give birth and continue forward even through the subjugation of religion. And again, another big fuck you to the status quo of subjugating women. Awesome. So. <laughs> Yeah. I totally I like that too. I mean, I think that um, you know, women. I think we we all also function in cycles, and it's it's really hard for to to get that understanding of who we are as women. Um, you know, because one day we can be a bitch, yeah, but then you know, it's, it's no. It, I mean, why is wrong? Because you know, like men can be assholes, right? <laughs> so. It's like that kind of a conversation. And I think uh, it speaks to me a lot for the visceral, you know, um, understanding of the piece. Well, I definitely like the visceral response. <laughs> um, so let's see, there's, this one is um, from the same series, but this one was actually from a book um, called Witches and Demonology. And these sections are from where in, the, in history, um, they actually had, there was a, a group of nuns. Um, I don't know what that's called, like a sisterhood or I don't know. Um, but a, a convent had um, started cycling together and they were being assaulted by one of the priests. And when they tried to mention it, they were described, they, people decided that they were witches because they were menstruating at the same time and saying the same thing. And then they burned them. And so that's why I, I chose to do this particular piece. Um, and this is also done with menstrual blood and epoxy. We're not seeing a second one, a second image. You're not? Mm -mm. That's, all, that's why I raised my hand. Um, Share your screen again. Maybe when you moved it. There you Thank go. You. Share it now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. And then this one is a little bit more intense. I don't know if I want to finish it, but I will share it and then we can move on to somebody else. Great. Yeah, I think I, I love, I, well, I, I do love this thesis just because I feel like the performance also, um, you know, using your body to create, even if, I don't know if you consider this, you know, something that it can be framed as a painting, right? But um, it's, it's that connection using your body. Um, and myself as a performance artist, I do that a lot too, with measurements even of my body, but my body has to be involved. Um, as, like I said before, I think it's part of this, um, you know, uh, it's like a trauma, I mean, becoming like more of a transformational piece, right? When, yeah. when you do that. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously my, my pieces are, are kind of around that idea of policing women's behavior. And I'm just so appalled that somebody would think that we need to police our behavior. <laughs> so, especially when it comes to like menstruation and things that are of a woman. So I totally get that. <laughs> it's, it's really interesting because this one made me think of certain antiquity uh, before you showed an old, the Old Testament. So then I was thinking of further back uh, at, um, you know, when, they, when women used to, you know, in the small communities would all bleed at the same time. So they used to put them in the same tent because the, we, they didn't have the modern conveniences that we have. And it would, mm -hmm. be, and it's, this is a messy experience, which if we didn't have those modern conveniences, this is what it would be, a mess, a big mess of bodies and the way the legs seem to be. And so it's just very, very powerful. This is a, a very strong image yeah. to me. It's to me. <laughs> it, it, it makes your point very well, even more than the ones looking like a vagina. This one looks, it's just, there's that rawness I find very appealing. 
Thank you. Within your whole project. Absolutely, yeah. Well, thank you very much. And again, the honor has been um, phenomenal for me to be able to participate with this group of women and um, this particular show. So thank you for including me and allowing me to share. Okay. So uh, thank you so much for sharing. And we're going to probably read some questions um, after, or I will maybe ask you more questions. <laughs> but now we're going to uh, get to know Cheyenne happens. So welcome, Cheyenne. Thank you so much. I am, I am actually quite shy, so I've been a little bit nervous about my interview. Just checking that you all can hear me. Yes. And I, did, I do have my rape whistle here, Audra. It's part of my costume on the ongoing because as a living doll, as a representation and embodied artist who exposes basically the sacred and profane as you do, um, it's, it can be kind of a dangerous position uh, to be in. And so we're putting ourselves out there as women and um, speaking for those who can't speak or who don't have the voice to speak out. So I care, I wear my rape whistle um, every time I go out now and it is very loud, just saying. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> It's also just great for getting attention. So if you ever need attention, you know, you have your whistle. <laughs> um, well, um, I thought I'm sorry, I just want to say a comment. That I, what I love about, you know, your character is that that, that is so, it's so intense to, to I mean, it's, it takes a lot of courage, you know, to go out on the street um, as you were, uh, as you dress right like that. And I feel like, um, what, what was was the message, let's say, if you want to say this is the message behind it and what's the message that you want to portray when you go out? Um, so Cheyenne literally just happened in my life. So I'll speak as my other self, but I would just say that um, when I go out, I, I feel like I'm truly being myself as an artist. Like I'm living myself as an artist and never have I had more fun or more attention or more of a voice. And also just in every environment, I feel like people respond, some the same and some different. There's, you know, people who are completely and entirely disgusted and have to look away and can't make eye contact. And I'm like, wow, that's me. Um, and some people who want to have a conversation and tell me what it means and how it feels. And then others who want to collaborate. And then um, what's wonderful is because there's so much um, response. It's like, I've never had that much response from putting a piece of artwork on the wall. Um, and so I've come off the wall. Uh, sometimes I put things on the wall and this time, um, you know, uh, mixed between video, being in video photos and now editing um, just gives me a whole other avenue that um, is really fun. And it's like collage and it's, um, it, it can be just so much, so many different things. Um, and, I, I sometimes cover myself up more than other times, depending on how I'm feeling. And sometimes I just lay down on the ground and that feels like the thing to do. I feel like um, exasperated by things in the world. And so I just think the only thing I can do to express myself is to just deflate and to lay down until I can get a hold of myself. <laughs> okay. Uh, and do you, um, well, you interact with other people as well, right? Like you have pretty much you get close to to these encounters with different audiences. Yes. Um, and I wonder if you ever had a, a rejection, let's say, you know. Oh yeah. Well, I had a very surprising thing happen once. Um, uh, told me that I should never go out and perform or be in public. Um, as myself. And uh, the reason for him, it was it really touched a very, very deep 
place where he had been abused. And um, I think that sex dolls were involved. And so I felt like completely horrified and that, um, you know, I touched this really sore place in him. Um, but then I realized that, you know, everyone's going to have a different response and that um, I can't protect him and he can't protect me, but we all have to do our part in um, changing the way people think and feel about um, abuse and um, non-consensual um, con touch. So, yeah. That was very difficult. I almost retired after that, but I decided that my voice couldn't be, um, it couldn't be shut down. Um, another time that happened, something uh, at the Ventura County Government Center, we had an art exhibit and I submitted a piece that was um, banned from the show as were six or nine other women's pieces that were too much for audience members at the Ventura County Government Center. And I'd first gotten a phone call that I was an honorable mention and I was so excited I'm going to show up. And then I got an email that said the pictures were banned and uh, there was a compromise made and there was a whole wall um, of art on the fourth floor of the government center to um, show those works that were um, not being shown in the exhibit. I so I felt very honored by being in that part of the exhibit. Exactly. That, actually, actually at the end of the hallway. <laughs> um, of the by the men's bathroom so everyone had all the men had to walk by our pieces to go to the restroom interesting yeah because I think that also Audra had a comment when you know when I selected her work and she was saying something like that like um well it's, it's been a while or it's been years that that let's say they don't they don't pick your work right to show because probably has that controversial uh, uh you know, feeling of it, like, I mean, this is too harsh and, or whatever, but I feel we, I, we all go through that and even in a real life anyway, um, because we don't get included and all that. The, the first piece that I had ever submitted to a show was at the Ventura County Government Center. And I was pretty excited to show something at the Government Center. And, um, you know, my outfit is, you know, semi-revealing, but really doesn't show very much, but there was a little, nipple that little bit of a raised nipple and the person who was judging the show or taking the work in said oh i don't think this is going to be submitted allowed to be submitted i was like oh just let's put a sticker over it then you know it doesn't <laughs> um and it did end up getting put in the show i believe i but i thought that was really interesting <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as much the content as the teeny nipple that was not even going to be allowed <laughs> yeah that's amazing <laughs> Do you like to show us uh, some other? Um... Sure, I am um, technology is not my very, very much my forte. Um, I thought I'd just share, can you see that? To, to start with, can you see that? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Um, so now you can go to your- Oh, okay. Presentation, or your um, individual photos. And... Here's just, uh, can, oh, there's Audra. That's fun. <laughs> can you see that? Wait, let me see. No, it just says Zoom okay. slides. When you pick it, make sure you oh, pick, pick it up to click your presentation. Because you know, now, you I've lost, of now I've actually lost everything except I'll just um. There we go. Can you see that? Reshare your screen. Uh, you know what? I am really sorry to say that I've lost the Zoom. So. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure you don't want to I'm be not on sure. Zoom. You don't need. You have to go in your desktop and double click on the images. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm, you see anything? No, you're, I don't think you're sharing anymore. Yeah, I'm not. You know what? I'm really sorry to be. Well, uh, just click share screen and then you'll be fine. It's down at yeah, the bottom. I can. You, I you can't have the actually... Zoom icon. If you click your Zoom icon, it should put that oh, right now back. I'm back. I'm back. Now I'm back. I couldn't even see the Zoom screen. So I'll go to my share my screen and I will choose an image right 
there in which I am entirely deflated. I'm also blonde. <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, good. Um, so this was one of my very first collaborations, just very much spontaneous. I met up with Uncle Sam at a festival. Um, he's artist Kane Motter, and he lives in Joshua Tree and has um, super inspired me in so many ways. Um, but here he is blowing me up as I was just, um, okay. Uh, that's when I have to, you know, take a bath every now and then. <laughs> uh, this was the piece that was, um, what is the word am I trying to say? It's, uh, it was banned from the government and it was a show that, I can't remember the title right now, but it was, um, it was meant to give people voices. And then the fact that so many people's voices were shut down, including mine. And in this case, I really didn't know what the controversy was, um, but someone was uncomfortable with it. So that was banned. <laughs> that's, um, that's, that's, that's crazy for me, just, you know, my opinion, but I feel like, um, like I said at the beginning, I think it's a lot of courage for you to kind of like also have that interaction with people, you know, and they can do pretty much not everything, but you can touch you, can, you know, have that thing. Um, yeah. um, I was going to mention on that last piece that the photographer was Chris Jensen and Audra actually styled that photo. So that was really fun to collaborate with her. Um, this is uh, where I Santa and people can sit on my lap it's and tell me what their wishes are. Yeah. What's that? It's still showing Uncle Sam. Oh, that's weird. Okay. It's like, wait, I didn't do this one. <laughs> Go to the next one. Okay. Well, then we missed a couple things. Um, this was a collaboration with Trinity Wheeler. And here I am doing a little Bob Ross um, well, invitation. Sorry. Um, kind of the Uncle Sam. <laughs> You're gonna have to share again and then. All right. Gosh, all those stories I just told, how's that? Yeah. Finally, okay. And then I can go to, told you this was my first time on doing this at all, so. Great, it's great. You're doing okay. great. So, um, yeah, that's good. It's so this one I, I thought of as part of the rebirth. I didn't submit this, but I thought this one reminded me of rebirth. So this is an action that you uh, were painting these butterflies or you have a video um, made with? So Trinity does um, family portraits and she put up a beautiful spring backdrop and I was helping her put up the butterflies and she said, sure, bring Cheyenne along. So we had fun taking a few quick shots at the end of the day. There's probably some more of them. Um, there's another. Frustrating. <laughs> well, I'll go on to. You're seeing Kane again. Fabulous. There's Rosie. Can you see that one? No. Well, in the meantime, I want to read a, a question for you from uh, sure. from Andy Parker. It says, um, "You mentioned." men having strong reactions to your persona in the streets? Do you ever have women have strong reactions to? Oh, definitely. Um, women have more of the time have a very strong reaction, either positively or negatively. Um, and they don't hesitate to tell me or I can actually obviously, obviously see on their faces. And I do my best to just kind of move away um, and not bother people. Um, I never would, you know, be myself around children. I um, just really want to be conscious of the fact that I do um, um, cause people to have emotional responses. Can you see that? Uh, we can see a black screen. <laughs> Well, 
Well, I wish I could be more technologically savvy mm -hmm. and you're not seeing any of these. No, it just says um, Shane happened to start a screen sharing, but it's not. Yes, yeah, not showing. Well, this would be a good moment for people if you want yeah. to ask more questions, <laughs> either to um, yeah. or, or why don't I just say um, to check out my website and I do have some photos, my Facebook and Instagram. I try and update it whenever possible. Um, sorry, I don't have that many photos to share right now because it's obviously taking up a lot of time just trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, the idea for this is also that, you know, we all share our, our, our the work that we do and then we connect and we keep um, maybe thinking on working on things together and et cetera. So um, Definitely. for me, it's good to, to know that the artists are in the community as well. So now is the Randy's Matushivitz. Good. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> um, Still in sharing screen. Yeah, you had to stop sh uh, sharing, Cheyenne. Oh. Yes, and the they yeah. perk. Okay, so hi, I'm Randy. Um, and I'm also grateful to be in the show for many reasons. One is because it gave me the opportunity for the first time to show my videos. Um, I don't, let's tell a little bit about my practice first. I start, I've been painting, drawing mostly 2D based and some installation since about the beginning of my practice. And I don't know if you've had this experience, but sometimes when I see strangers and their gestures or their facial expressions or the way they move, I think I know something special about them or I understand something about them. And I started to make paintings, the portraits and narratives that would talk to this. So the Portraits were never intended to look like the people I see. They're often were based on women or someone who would be portrayed as female um, at the same time as all of this is going on for the last five years. My mother was quite elderly and not well and lived with my family. Um, so it is a very interesting, a lot of looking back, I see that a lot of these paintings resemble her or myself, and this is why they look like me, because I am painting an emotion, a breath of emotion. So I will share my, so before I go on, why my mother was, I did two bodies of work during the COVID lockdown. The first body came out very fast, a body of almost 30 paintings called dystopian lullabies, where I was really still working with faces, my love of that subtlety, but how the whole world was clustered together. And I really took it from my personal, my house, to my mom and my kid and caregivers, to my neighborhood. And it, in my mind, it just kept like the whole world's on lockdown. The whole world's glued, clustered together, waiting to know something as if we were under these different bubbles in our cities. So around a few months later, after that body of work, um, and again, my work is dystopic. My work is not always pretty. The subject matter is not pretty, but the painting is, the paint is pretty <laughs> in a way. And I'll start sharing that in a second. Um, I started when my mom was in home hospice to um, play with my phone and see if I can get some of these photo apps inspired by Cindy Sherman who I love, that she was posting all these bizarre clowns and things. And I'm like, if she can do it, I can do it. But she was working with photography. I was working with paintings. That being said, I'd like to share with you some of the results. So I'll share my screen. Um, let me see, here is this one. So, and if this helps for anyone who hasn't done this a few good times, what I wanna share with you is you can put them, with, depending on your computer, in a PowerPoint, in a keynote, in a Google slide, and you could just show your slideshow. And that will help you have everything in one place for your talk. And Cheyenne, so I know you were, I don't want to put you up, but reach out to me. I'll be glad to help you, okay? Because I know it's frustrating. And I say that with love. And if someone didn't teach me, I wouldn't know either. So, so Headspace 
3D is a pun on headspace. Here is not um, Art City, but because of Art City, within the same month I was able, and it's still up as well, these two videos at Shockbox, and they're playing. So, and that's in Hermosa Beach. It all begins with paint, oil paintings, oil and canvas. And here are some of the protagonists of my videos. That was Toulouse, this is Queenie, at the wedding, who now I often just call her the bride. And there's a lot of stories about the Jewish bride. I'm Jewish. I work with the Jewish Artists Initiative on their programming to give artists a place to speak. Um, and, and so now I get to experience both sides. And this is coiffed. As you can see, these are thick oil paintings. Faces are not any one person and they're all in the midst of an expression. So as you're watching, I'll talk because they are silent. I became really obsessed with the silent communication that we have, whether you live with other people in your world or just in a room with friends um, or any experience you would have had in a workplace where you can sense what people are feeling and thinking and no one said a word and you just have a good sense. So this is Toulouse, which is playing at Art City. And this is Queenie, which is at Shockbox. And this is a montage of several short videos. And some do have sound, you'll have to let me know if you can hear it with a thumbs up or not when we get, and I'll let this one play a little longer. Um, can you hear any of that? No. I had, no, okay, I had to make it very low for the gallery, but nothing still, right? Yeah, a little bit, we can hear some. Okay, well, that's because this is the recording. This is like bells chiming, like a clock tower. And this is, so the story, it's not so important that you hear sound or don't, it's only an addition, but the story is to, to interact the way we do as strangers, as people we know, to help build bridges in society for seeing each other as equal. Whether we are women, we are people of different origins, we are this other, like, Maria had said, I've always been aware of the other. My work is very existential. And through the moving image, I am able to create this breadth of experience. I think that, you know, why we need to celebrate all of our differences, we fiercely need to embrace our universals for our race and our species rather, more than our race, sorry, that was the wrong word, but for our species. Mm -hmm. So this is Quaft. And this one will be on the Helms building in the summer. It'll be projected. And so this is three minutes. I won't pace the whole thing, but you could see this um, as we think multiple thoughts at a time, as we go through things, we all do. It seems obvious, but we forget to respect that each person is equally as important in their universe as we are in ours. And it's a very simple message. And like um, others, you others were saying, it's very hard to get this work. This work is hard for some people to look at. Yeah. Not, it disturbs them on any other level than their own emotional fraughtness and their own emotional, you know, struggles, which I believe we all have. Yeah, and I, I love that part of your work because it's kind of like that, right? It's kind of like that hard, hard to see sometimes those expressions and some those kind of like a communicate this communicating to you but sometimes you don't you don't accept it as as a norm it's just like um you question and you criticize right and so I think it's an ugliness behind that too but at the same time it's, it's, it's beauty you know yes well all my work <clears throat> for years I've been obsessed with facial expressions and what is sublime and what is ugly what is object and what is pleasurable and i think you know even the paint quality that i paint with it's thick it's not it's not um always as easily accepted in some venues so um for the sake of time this goes on and on and it's a i was asked to make a three minute video and i put many different clips together so from smiling and laughing to 
being upset, perhaps tears come in, just observing. We're always looking. I'm always looking. I'm watching everyone. You take me to a baseball game, I'm watching the people. You know, more than the game. And so... I, and, and also, I don't know if you think, you thought about this before, but it also to me is um, talking about this loneliness, you know, that we all experience, especially maybe in my case, right? I feel like this, this country is a little bit, it's a lonely, a lot of, it's a, long, a, lot, a lot of lonely people here. And um, this thesis also bring that also like this contact with yourself, but at the same time, like you said, with the other, you know, it's like, um, I know that's how I read it. I, I read it in the beginning because I feel like I said in lockdown, People, a lot of people were locked in their houses with nobody to talk to. And um, that kind of- And I was going through an impossible situation. Um, so they get, they're similar. This one does have sound, whoops, but I'll move to this one for sake of time because it just is, it's a little longer in month. So I had made, this will give you an example of my short clips and that again, they're all from these characters who now, for me, these characters, whether it's Queen or Quay or the Bride, they are living beings as we are. And you can see more sides to them as the mirror, what's human. And I'm using technology, one step removed to question our definitions of what is human in, in, and, and with, through this digital manipulations, which are just apps on a phone, I'm not using fancy technology because I'm a good technical user, not a coder. I'm an artist. I'm a drawer and a painter first. And some of these are a little bit more playful. And this one has a bubbling sound because I was trying to make some lighter ones and a gallery had asked me to make them into some NFTs. Um, that's a whole other conversation. I had to have no yeah. idea, <laughs> but um, whoop, that's, so that's that. I don't know what, I clicked it too fast, see? And even with knowing what to do, wait a minute, I'm trying to stop my bit share. Stop share, stop share, hello. It's not listening to me. Where's my arrow, hang on. There we go, oh, just there. Um, can you still see? Yeah. Okay, great. What I want to show now is just real quick. I make these, um, this is in designer. And I put together these flip books. This is dystopian lullabies that I was mentioning earlier. Sorry, my screen went off. And so you can see how these paintings are really reflecting human turmoil being clustered, the hard stuff that we experience. I just don't think it's well talked about in art. It's not um, accepted to see it as much as I would like it to be. Because I think that if we don't, we're not on social media all the time and looking perfect and being perfect. No, yeah. And I, I think that it has a, a, this is really strong to not, in your work, that is it's okay to not be perfect. You know, it's okay to have those flaws of, you know, I, I think I've seen some that you have a, uh, they're crying, right? And they're laughing and it's like all these emotions really that come alive. For the, um, in, in the videos? Yeah. You um, mean in the video? And the videos, yeah. And you're, because I've seen your work, um, and, and your website that yeah let me get back to that nft yes there's um well here can i just i don't know if time will permit we we'll, we'll have a little bit of time so let me explain something that will show more of those and i'm sorry some of this will um might i hope it's not too repetitive i am randy matashevich my love for painting faces has been a focus over the last several years. I believe faces are our mirrors. Intuitively, we know what a facial expression means. And in my work, I seek to connect 
the things we know, the things we feel, and the things that are common to being human. In paint and digital media, I rely on our familiarity with feeling to create understanding. So you've seen Queenie. Now you can hear it though, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. we can hear it. I wanted you to see the one on the end. Okay. <laughs> so, but I am working on the range of emotion in these, and they are portraits of emotions and breadth of emotions. Let me ask you, so uh, just really quickly, I don't know what the, na the names have any importance, like why you call them Queenie and um, the other names that you have on your pieces. I don't know if they have relation with you or not. You know, I, I, they sit for a very long time without names. And this is the name that repeatedly comes to me when I think of them. The painting Toulouse, I felt the coloring scheme was so Toulouse-Lautrec you know, as I was working on a painting, on a series of these portraits and trying to bring myself out of a jewel palette into a more modern palette. Um, I give myself a lot of exercises when I'm not working on a series to just work on skills. And this started that way. So I was thinking, and every so often I do an ode to somebody, whether it's Alice Neal, or um, in this series, there's an ode to Matthew Barney uh, with a very uh, face. So their names just repeat to me, Queenie. I looked at her for months and finally she said to me, I'm the queen. That's my name. <laughs> and she's very small. She's only 16 by 12, uh, you know, 12 wide, 16 tall. And many layers later and many months later, she's like, I'm the queen. And that's, that's it. That's how their names, Adora was the sweetest one. So she is adoring um, and, um, and that's how their names come. I used to name earlier pieces after people whose names I felt they were like or a feeling that if I knew the person or just a feeling that I associated with the name based on sound of the name um, or the rhythm. And it, it's just, yeah, and this is where they go to. And the videos is um, what happens now is I name of the character and then um, it, depending on the montage, Queenie's could be Queenie's Requiem. It's, her, it's one of her stories, one of her arias, so to speak. I have others where Queenie is singing like an aria. Um, and so that's how I decide what they should be called. I really don't want to say happiness, sadness. I don't want to, you know, I really want you to think of them as a person. Of course, of course. No, but if someone thinks it's a good idea, tell me. <laughs> <I'll listen. laughs> Uh, I have a, a comment here from Cheyenne, and she's saying that, Randy, this work touches me. Thank you so much. Oh, you. And also, Andy Parker has a question. It says, do you feel that you are creating your art or discovering um, or discovering it? I feel if I feel back, blah, sorry, back layers to find something underneath. Like, you know, I think I understand the question. That's a very good question, Andy. My work is extremely intuitive. I call it, um, it's like, it's, it's educated intuition. I've done a lot of work, studied a lot of art history. I still read, you know, I'm going into video. How dare I not look at the history of Nam June Pike and Tony Ausler because how, how dare I not? Oh, Whether yeah, I like Viola, it. right? Right, or Bill, oh my God, I love, I never thought I'd be going into video. It's the apps, it, it opened a whole new world. And now of course, learning more things. Um, I think my whole process is about peeling away the layers to get to that human essence, to that place where I was speaking that we could find where we are, that crux of being human. It's, it's meant, my work is meant to reach at the, if you stay with it, it's a slow gaze. I'm playing with a couple of ideas that are out there, slow gaze. You're not gonna get it if you run by, 
especially with the videos and the, and some people I've I've had I'll share in this very warm group. I've had we've all shared some of the criticisms we've received that the um, the look of the paintings is too like we've seen it before, like a master painting. However, like you know, a different period. However, I think it's time for some of that to come back. There's a lot of bad painting out there. Sorry to say it. Just because you might paint like you don't have skill doesn't mean you don't have skill, right? But some people really don't know why they're painting like that. They don't have the choices in their toolbox. That irks me, that's personal. So I don't mind if that work looks a little old fashioned, but yes, it is all about what's underneath. Because underneath, we all have moments where one hot mess, we all have moments where we're everything the opposite of one hot mess and we're riding the waves and the clouds. And I really, it, it's like, it's very timely, but my story has been the same story for more than 10 years that I want people to, I've always wondered how we're alike, embrace our universals and celebrate our differences. Yeah. Kind of Star yeah. Trek, where all, there's room for all of us. <laughs> you know? like but I like to make fun, I like to make it light. So thank you for asking, that's exactly what it's about. You got it, dude. <laughs> Cheyenne, do you have a question uh, for Randy? Thank you, Anja. Uh, your microphone is off. There you go. Oh, we can hear you. Oh, she's okay. good. There you go. Can you hear me? Oh, no, just turn up the microphone again. Okay. You did it. There. <laughs> No, I just wanted to thank you and and say yeah. I just, I just was actually just applauding um, Audra saying it was quite original and it really blew me away. I I did actually um, have a child with me during the show and she was just like wanted to have the face layered on her face and have this you know. Then I took a picture of that and oh, that's great. It inspired some great interaction. So if you want to yeah, know, that's what I think it is too. It's interesting to interact with the art, you know which that's why I think part of the bring the three of you together for me was to have that because all, all three of you interact right, right with people, either with performance or a moving picture. Um, and I think that's what really, I think that the, the art world is going now too, because we have so much things to fix, too many things to say. And if you don't interact, you don't have that experience with the other, right? To learn something. So. And, and for, yes, and for those of you who shared like with the rejection or the change in decisions, if you're gonna, and I'm not, I don't say if you are in a negative way, but I, but the point to say, if you choose to continue, then choose to accept that you're choosing the hard road. I accepted it, that I choose the, I've chosen a very hard road, what I talk about, what I want to accomplish. It's not popular. It's not, you know, easy. It's yeah. not, it's, it's, um, but if people collected uh, the German expressionists, then they collect me too. Some, and I do have a few really special collectors. I've had people buy, I've been in, I've had shows where no one's bought anything. And I've had people reach out to me yet from Instagram, from various places or institutions to do a special project, right? You know what I mean, Maria, it's there's different ways. And um, I hope so for future tidbits, and I, I've been listening to Clubhouse, I don't know if any of you are on that, it makes me crazy, but an artist was talking about that she's making her work three-dimensional. So it's literally like a hologram. Another artist was talking about she's creating space in her landscapes virtually. Uh, I don't know if she needs glasses or not, but I'm trying to investigate some other experiences. Before this NFT thing really exploded, and I still haven't sold anything there either, but I have them up, I've been invited, it's nice. My dream for my videos would be to make short clips that people could download on their phone and keep as a screensaver, you know, maybe just basically going blah, 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 blah. One of those, it would be, and you could see those on my website or on OpenSea, you would, and sometimes, and on my Instagram page, if you scroll, because they're funny. And, and they tell these stories that I think we could all relate to. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Three, people put them on their TV screens with the USB drive or download it. 
So keep, just keep doing it. That's all I can say. But thank you so much. Um, I think this, this was great. I mean, I don't have any more questions, I don't think. Uh, just, um, oh yeah, Robert is saying really fantastic. Thanks for all the sharing and the host. Thanks for guiding the, the, the hour. Really special to see uh, all's art and longtime fan of Cheyenne and Audra. Leave you art, Randy. Love. Love. It's art. It's just love. Yeah. yeah. Love. <laughs> love your art. So great to meet everybody. And, and Maria, thank you for bringing us together. No, yeah, I think, I, well, thank you guys, because I think like I said at the beginning, this show wouldn't be uh, happening without you guys and trusting me, you know, that I'm, I'm not new in the community, but I'm not, nobody really knows me. And this was great. I think um, for the future events, we can all collaborate. We can still, you know, have this kind of um, conversation as a culture, cultural ex exchange. I, I see it that way. Yes, um, let's do some stuff. Absolutely. Yes, and Maria, yeah. People do know you now because you did such a great job with this and you know you put it out there in so many different mediums despite we can't go to a show, we can't see a show, you made it happen yeah. in our community. And so now we can really, you know, the last week's um, uh, video is available for anyone to listen if they want to hear more women. And, um, this one is going to be also available for people who didn't um, have the chance to, to see it. And uh, just want to invite you guys on Saturday, this the 24th, um, we're having a closing um, event and you are welcome to bring whoever you want. Uh, I think Cheyenne is going to have a performance as well. And uh, we would love to meet you all there. And, um, you know, it's fun. I mean, just exchange um, information to all of us. We have an online, also that's a new thing for our city. We have an online exhibition, which, you know, um, those kind of things, I think uh, it will remain in our website as a proof of like, you know, we're doing something and especially women, which is, I'm so excited. <laughs> Too. I have to tell you, a lot of my friends here in LA were asking me, where is that? And some knew and a lot didn't. And now a lot more people are like, what's going on over there? That's a place, That's a place I should be looking into. It creates some noise, you know, I mean, and we all did it. I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm so happy for the results. I really am. So, thank you guys. You did a great job and continue to, so thank you. Okay, so uh, Andy Parker is saying, great job from New Zealand. Um, That's where you are. Can oh you know God. more about what you are doing in the future? <laughs> Please DM anytime. You know, Instagram is a great way to find people. I don't know about the rest of you guys. So Yeah, Instagram for sure. And uh, I think at the end, we, I'm going to send an email with all this, the, the people in the show so you guys can exchange. Terrific. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. This was great. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Better, Andy. Thank <laughs> you. I will. At least I know I will. That's and I'm going to reach out to you. So thank you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and thank you, our CD again. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Paul. Bye. Bye.